Welcome to this Halloween playlist, which does not feature Michael Myers. I haven't done Halloween Ends yet, so I can't make a compilation. So it's like the Halloween 3 of playlists, which also doesn't feature Halloween 3. <laughs> but you do get Trick or Treat, not the Sam one, the Parody Wacko, a Halloween Puppy, Yes, it, it is from the director of A Talking Cat, though I think it might have a talking dog in it. There's also Boo, A Medea Halloween, which features YouTubers that aren't me. You got The Day After Halloween, which isn't even about Halloween. And then there's the Paul Lind Halloween special, which is everything that makes Halloween great. Yes, including cat costumes. So, enjoy. It's October. You know what that means. Columbus Day! And apparently it's also the month where people watch a lot of horror movies and dress up in costume. I wouldn't know anything about that. I never dress in costume or watch horror movies. Believe it or not, one of the biggest requests I get involving Halloween-themed films isn't any movie from the Halloween franchise, but it's this 1986 hard rock-themed horror flick called Trick or Treat, not to be confused with the one with no O in the title. It's the story of a teenage metalhead who is bullied in school and gets a little help from the ghost of his dead rocker hero via a haunted record. It's also the story of what Skippy from Family Ties was doing while not hanging out with the Keatons. That's right, the movie stars Mark Price, best known as Skippy it's also the directorial debut of character actor Charles Martin Smith of American Graffiti and The Untouchables. But most importantly, you can now say that you're watching an 80s horror film from the director of Air Bud and Dolphin Tale. Seriously. And since it's often requested to me, I'm sure it's really good. Really, really fucking good. It's the 1986 De Laurentiis film that's no blue velvet, but is at least better than King Kong Lives. Let's get this rock party started! Go, oh, bear these tidings to great Lucifer. Say Faustus doth surrender up his soul. Ugh, I already have to listen to scripture in the Pure Flix movies. I don't need it in the 80s horror flicks, too. The hardest part of this movie will be resisting the urge to reference Rockets Your Decision. We start out by showing posters of bands and performers who aren't the person singing. And just what the hell is playing? Mark Price plays Eddie Weinbauer, and being a metalhead in this movie means that you wear a really shitty wig. He looks like one of the kids who got his dick chewed off in teeth. And I'm not sure, but I think his only friend is the BTK killer. He also doesn't fare well with bullies who mess up his hair, even though he worked on it all day and they touch it. These bullies have nothing better to do than to harass the metal kid and strip him down naked. Then he grows up to become Dwayne Johnson and partners with Kevin Hart. It'll do really well, but will be instantly forgotten. But at least he has his music. I mean, I've got thoughts in my head that nobody but you would understand. The one thing that holds me together is you. You. You did it, man. Ah, damn, he's gonna fuck that poster of Michael Hutchins. 
His rock hero is Sammy Kerr, played by the late Tony Fields. Sammy's act apparently consists of biting snakes in half, dousing himself in blood, and sexually harassing a microphone. But what does his music sound like? <laughs> Didn't expect that. But tragedy soon strikes for Sammy's one fan. Again, rock star Sammy Kerr, victim of a hotel fire, dead at age 38. The fire started when Drexel the Dream Hemsley's plane crashed into it. Eddie is really upset. Now he's forced to settle on new music from Damn Yankees. So he tears down all his posters and replaces them with Barry Manilow, who is scientifically proven to live forever. But he'll never forget this on-point music. He's tearing down posters, not walls. But really, who pays attention to the lyrics anyway? Eddie mourns with local DJ Nuke, played by Gene Simmons, who at one point used to be Hank Williams Jr., I guess. But Nuke has a little surprise for Eddie. I got something for you. you know what this is? It's the last record. That's right, Lou Christie's final record, truly amazing falsetto. Oh, oh we were talking about Sammy Kerr's final record. All right. Nuke has plans on playing Sammy's final record at midnight on Halloween. That way people will be asleep while it's playing. It's the only copy in the world, so it makes sense to loan it to the kid who's known for tearing up shit in a nerd rage. And then he leaves Eddie with his God, I'm gonna fuck that wig eyes. Eddie's friend looks like they wanted to give him a Skippy look, not realizing they hired Skippy himself as the lead. Eddie gets invited to a pool party so he can take a break from his heavy metal fan fiction. What could possibly go wrong here? Best case scenario, he falls into a barrel of acid and turns into Toxie. Oh, go figure, the bullies are there. Then how about getting the fuck out of here? I'm meeting someone. Who? Now, Tim may seem like an asshole, but we're gonna need his help as soon as Godzilla hits New York. Ah, uh, good. Someone who looks like Lori Laughlin, though her advice sounds nothing like what Aunt Becky would give. Yeah, I mean, why can't you act normal? I don't know what you're talking about. Wait, if you weren't so creepy, you would know what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, like her totally straight boyfriend who strips other classmates down naked in the locker room. By the way, can I just say how disappointed I am in Aquaman's new origin story? How did he not think this night would end up like this? I'm gonna nail every one of those bastards. I don't know how, I don't know when, but I'm gonna nail them. Yes, he's gonna track water all over their freshly cleaned carpets. Now's as good a time as any to listen to that new album. That's quite the meh face you're giving. On the other hand, the new Rammstein cut is excellent. He discovers that when you play it backwards, it says Paul isn't dead, but Mozart sure as fuck is. Anyway, I'm sure this school day will go much better. Hey, it's Aquaman. <laughs> I already made that fucking joke! Eddie gets his revenge, though, by starting a fucking prison riot. This had better not get slapsticky. <laughs> <laughs> Can't pick on someone with a broken back now, can ya? They're running so fast, they don't even see the 35-year-old rummaging through someone's locker. Will Eddie get the best of these bullies? Die, eh, they're not gonna get in any trouble. That would affect their football scholarship. Eddie's friend, however, is a little unimpressed with the album. Well, I think it's your ordinary run-of-the-mill back mass message, just like he did on Fuck With Fire, Burning Metal, and uh, Torture's Too Kind. Are those albums, singles, or forgotten Herschel Gordon Lewis movies? Rest in peace.
Now he's off to go tend to the corpses in his fridge, while we at home play 80s metalhead or hipster. Or let's just listen to that haunted record again. <laughs> Fucking real. Eh, the same thing happens when you play Judy's Turn to Cry by Leslie Gore in reverse. It's not that abnormal. The record tells him to go to shop class, so I'm assuming the record wants him to build an arc, and on that arc will be two of every kind of mullet. If you can get past the bullies, who by the way nailed their Bright Lights Big City audition. Oh no, this isn't Bright Lights Big City at all. He won the role as Giovanni Lombardo Radice in City of the Living Dead. Uh, he survives this one, and on the plus side, his perfect Billy Idol hair is still having a nice day for a white wedding. At this point, I don't even have the heart to tell him that his metal god was one of the solid gold dancers. Apparently, Mom has never seen her son before, as she's just now discovering what he wears and what music he listens to. It's every parent's nightmare. Her son is either Beavis or Butthead. Actually, it's worse. He's Stuart. So, he decides to summon Sammy again. Oh, hey, it's his best song yet. Oh look, he made Tim a mixtape! I sure hope it's got some Simply Red on there! And the creepiest person in the movie is still the bone and panty collector. Even with Eddie dressing like a reject from Griff Tannen's gang. Tim, meanwhile, is waiting for the Great Pumpkin to rise. And by Great Pumpkin, I mean his dick. But when he goes to take a piss, his girlfriend decides to listen to some music. At least it's not in mono. Something tells me Sammy may have been a bit of a date rapist. Her orgasm goes on so long, I wonder how long it takes for this guy to piss. <laughs> Plus, the remake of Christine is really stupid. The song melts her ears, which is a real bummer. He was totally gonna fuck those. Oh, now we get our second cameo in the movie, with Ozzy Osbourne playing an anti-rock and roll spokesman, in a universe where apparently Ozzy himself also exists. I don't even think it's a sense of humor. I think they're just out-and-out -out sick people, I mean, and they're trying to make everyone else around them who, who listen to their music as sick as they are. Huh, it's Ozzy's long-lost son, Crispin Glover Osbourne. Do continue. Deep, deep, you'll beg for more. Raising hell and serpent score. Feel me, feel me. Now, what does that mean to you? To me, it means nothing but a sexual act. This is the clearest he has ever sounded. <laughs> Tim shows up at Eddie's house instead of going to the cops, but Eddie has his pumpkins perfectly trained. And you did something. You did something to that tape. I don't know what you did, but you're getting into some weird fucking shit, man. And I just want you to stay away from me, okay? All right? Bullshit! If you don't keep bullying him, how is he going to become the killer from Prom Night? Or Terror Train? Or Slaughter High? Well, you see where I'm going with this. The record tells him to kill them all, because it got bored of possessing the son of Sam's dog. We, we, we can't just just go and... Nail them all. Nail them all. Fuck them. Well, that's getting a parental advisory sticker, and most certainly will not be sold at Walmart. Just wait until the internet is invented. I'm just saying Eddie seems like the kind of guy who needs a conspiracy blog to pass the time. Better than continually playing this music. Turn that shit down. And the record is made even more evil through the power of Pepsi. Coke would have just made it sound like the latest Slayer album. Oh hey, good horror effects. Haven't seen that in a while. So is this killer going to actually appear in the movie?
Holy shit, it's Lita Ford! This is like Nightmare on Elm Street if Freddy had a bitchin' scandal collection. Oh, we're not through Cameo City yet, I see. These evil people have just got to be stopped. Ah! Is it weird that if this were some kind of 700 Club anti-rock movie, it'd probably have the same script? Dude, what are you doing now? How are you gonna sell all of this to a pawn shop 20 years later? Also, that is not your record, bro. Even Mom is upset by this. What have you done to your stereo? I wanted a new one. Well, too bad. You're getting a Nintendo for Christmas, just like everyone else. I've spent so much time comparing this kid to a serial killer, I didn't even realize he had a name. And apparently it's Roger. So Eddie wants Roger to steal the haunted cassette from Tim's car. He's smart enough to dress in all black, but dumb enough to do this in broad daylight. Not only did I not realize the character had a name, but it also just hit me that Roger is played by X-Files writer and producer Glenn Morgan in his only acting role. Eddie wanted Roger to destroy the tape, so of course he listens to it instead, and it blows out his speakers before he can get to his Goombay Dance Band album. The hell is going on here? Great, the movie's become so bored with itself, it's channel surfing. Sammy wants Roger to play the music at the school dance, or he's gonna keep killing off public access celebrities. It's Halloween proper, which explains why Eddie's mom is dressed like Steffi Love. And the movie finally has trick-or-treating in it, so I guess we can name the movie after that now. Eddie finds out the school dance is playing the Haunted Sammy album, so he races to the school, even though for some reason there's already another Haunted cassette in his car, which magically changed it into Ash's car from Evil Dead. I know what's happening. The car is now haunted by the ghost of Hal Needham. And then he just leaves and abandons his car. Irresponsible. Now for a cameo from the movie's director, Groucho Martin Smith. But Sammy's ghost soon arrives to play a set. <laughs> oh shit, forgot the lyrics. Sammy feels like the natural progression of the Driller Killer from Slumber Party Massacre 2. Though I'm not exactly sure what's turned Sammy into a murderer, it's not really a revenge story. He just died in a fire, probably from being an idiot. Therefore, everyone must die, or simply listen to his music. My pal's name is Football, Football. he always likes to roam. My pal's name is Football. Oh, God, it's worse than I thought it would be. Though I guess the soundtrack does have one fan. It's a trick or treat. See how they choose the next time. And what we should need. We're the yeah, you call yourself a fan now, but this is one rocker who will kill you if you don't rock hard enough. Just like the time Sid Vicious shot and killed his audience with guitar lightning. Throughout all of this, the band just keeps on playing until he turns on them. This is just like Carrie, if her full name was Carrie Great White. Tim surprisingly hasn't been killed off yet, just in time to confess that yes, he is indeed Brian Adams. Is he gonna have a moment of redemption in the movie's final act? You are such an asshole! How is this guy still alive? Hell, Eddie actually tries saving him, but that's not gonna help. And then he was doomed to appear in 176 episodes of Desperate Housewives. Oh, the cops are finally here. Well, better late than really late. Roger tries killing him, but the movie's still got 20 minutes left, and I doubt that all of that is ending credits and mourning over Roger. He's dead. Actually, I'm not. Ugh, he's an actual Lee. Just leave him there. 
So even though everyone saw Sammy zapping people on stage, Eddie is still blamed for this, so he has to escape the cops. He tries calling up Nuke to warn him that Nuke is one eye away from being the worst film ever made. He's also trying to stop Nuke from playing the record on the air. Across the country, Dr. Chalice is also stopping stations from playing the Silver Shamrock commercial. Everyone dies this Halloween. Eh, whatever. It's not like he's gonna play the album backwards. In the true spirit of Halloween, the eve of the dead, we're gonna play this first cut backwards. Crank it up. What? Why? Possessed or not, why would you do that? And what the hell album is he playing? I thought Eddie destroyed the world's only copy. Oh good, now the police are chasing the real culprit. <laughs> Unfortunately, he was stopped by Officer Looney Tunes. But there are some fine chuckles to be had here, unironically. Jesus! Can't you just open the door? Give me a heart attack. <laughs> I'm giving points to this movie for giving a big fuck you to jump scares. And again, well, good horror effects. See, this is why I never trusted Quiet Riot. You can't have a riot and also be quiet. Suspicious. And don't even get me started on Motley Crue. That's not how you spell crew. Also, is he seriously getting killed by a toilet? Okay, so he's not dead. Or maybe he is, and this is mysteriously taking place in the Maximum Overdrive continuity. I sure hope Nuke is alright. Yeah. Whew, thank God we still have Vinnie Vincent! Sammy has retired from performing and is instead directing the latest Gary Newman video. But Eddie has a big plan to finally finish off Sammy. How about that toilet, huh? You know, you looked a little flush back there. That's right, he's one-linering him to death. And he's taking him to jail for trashing a hotel room. Oh good, someone cleaned up the burning car so he can actually crash this time. Alright, so the water killed the electric man. This is one artist who is not rocking onto Electric Avenue. Now he's free to make out with his new girlfriend in front of a giant postcard. Wake up, sleepyheads. It's party time. Oh, and I guess he's a DJ now. <laughs> what? One thing is definitely for sure, I am never listening to my Wasp albums again. Largely because I don't own any in the first place. Well, since this movie brought it up, what does happen when you play the movie backwards? <laughs> Fuck that! I'm not falling asleep in the middle of a review again! Just play the movie regularly! The film only made about six million at the box office, but perhaps it made an extra profit by spending years in every five dollar DVD bin in the country with this ridiculously misleading box cover that makes it look like it stars Gene Simmons and Ozzy Osbourne. I prefer the original poster, which makes it look like it stars Stacy Jacks from Rock of Ages. Well, I was very disappointed in this film for over-spotlighting loud noise over the quiet dignity of a fine metropolitan opera. How am I supposed to sip on a glass of clinker brick wine when the soundtrack keeps breaking my glass? Perhaps someday we can get an opera horror film starring Ralph Malf. Naturally, we've got more Halloween-themed episodes to look forward to this month, but since we haven't done a fan poll in a while, subscribers to our Patreon page can vote on the next episode. And these spooktacular choices include the 2005 horror film Jack-O-Lantern, Evil lives in everything, like a Freddy pumpkin. Ugh. What else we got here? Uh, we got the comedy Spaced Invaders. Sure, relive your disappointment. Alright, what's the uh, next Halloween movie we got? Uh, I think it might actually be empty. 
uh, just uh, go ahead and pop up something for me. Uh, what? Uh, fucking Windy City? The hell does that have to do with Halloween? Nothing! Absolutely nothing! The goddamn pole is drunk again! Okay, fine. Those three choices. Have fun. Die, comic pig. It's quite easy to talk about all the classic parody films of the 70s and 80s and all of the terrible Seltzer Bird parodies of today, but trust me, bad parody films existed in the past, too. Case in point, the 1982 horror spoof film Wacko. <laughs> Don't remember Wacko? That's cause it sucks. The film is a Halloween-themed slasher parody about an escaped mental patient named the Lawnmower Killer. Even before virtual reality, he was crazy! The Lawnmower Killer stalks a group of high school students with a knife cabinet full of wackiness! No, oh, I'm sorry. I mean wackoness! Or just wacko! Even the poster references other, better parodies. The comedy that takes off where Airplane landed. Hell, this re-release cover will make you even miss the scary movies. Okay, maybe not all of the scary movies. I mean, this movie's bad, but I don't know if it's Scary Movie 5 bad. The movie features a surprising number of familiar faces, including George Kennedy and Charles Napier, and it's not like a group of nobodies made the movie. The film has four credited screenwriters who've individually worked on things like The Burbs, George of the Jungle, National Treasure, Rush Hour, and even Grimm and Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Some of you may know the film's director, Graydon Clark, as the director of the arcade comedy Joysticks, plus Angel's Revenge and Final Justice, which were both featured on Mystery Science Theater 3000. But I'll bet you this film is way different than those. Safe hands. Yeah, okay. The movie's rated PG. You're not gonna do anything with that knife. See? The only thing you murdered was the credits! I guess this is our killer. A pumpkin man with a dildo hanging out of his face. <laughs> And why the fuck is he coming out of his neck? Get ready for a spoof of the biggest Halloween film of them all. <sighs> Animal House! I don't see this getting weird. Damn it, Daddy, what are you doing? Uh, nothing, dear. I was just mowing the lawn. Guess I was wrong about the scene not getting weird. The movie is so darkly lit that I can't tell what anything is. Are those Power Rangers in the back seat? I don't know what just happened. Guess whatever goes on in this movie is really none of my business. But there really is a pumpkin-headed lawnmower killer, and he really did chop up my big sister Pam with a power lawnmower. Okay, so I guess that's what happened. I'm actually glad for the narration, and apparently so is Mary because she keeps masturbating over it. This here was all in the past. I'm sure things are different now. Maybe I misheard. Earlier. Maybe he isn't an incestuous dad who keeps trying to fuck his own daughter in this screwball comedy. Damn it, Daddy, what are you doing? Nothing, darling, just mowing the lawn. I am so angry at this dark joke from 1982 that I'm gonna write about it on my blog. What they should really be worried about is their son, who oh, wait for it, named Damien. This one? No, not that one. What a great parody of Michael from Burial Ground. 
Dad, George Kennedy, must chaperone the pumpkin prom. Seems safe. He's got to fill in for his daughter, Julia Duffy, who's on her way to that new heart audition. You're probably wondering who Joe Don Baker is playing. Yeah. Murder. Yeah. Nurse? Yeah, where? Old. Yeah. Mitchell. He's playing Mitchell again. We were all wrong. There really was a Mitchell too. It's just that no one saw this film because it's awful. Though I like that he's arming himself with a coffee cup, among other things. I just assume that's how Joe Don leaves his house every day. The lawnmower killer has escaped, so let's kick around some body parts. Though we do find out why he carries coffee with him. I swore when it happened I wouldn't sleep until the murder was brought to justice. You mean you haven't slept in 13 years? 31 years old, Doc, you tell me, huh? <laughs> so why don't you just tell me what the movie is spoofing? All I know is today's October the 31st. 31 backwards is 13. It's Friday, it's Halloween. It's the 13th anniversary of the lawnmower killings. It's a crazy loose. It's prom night. Well, there's a lot of movies I should be watching instead. This movie is more awkward than virgin sex. I am so excited about... Well, about... Making love for the first time tonight? Right. Mm, that's not the weirdest part of this scene. And, 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 and. I think she may be in safer hands with her dad, who wants to fuck her. The school is Alfred Hitchcock High School, and I guess it is a pretty funny gag advertising the Hitchcocks versus the De Palmas. This school is gonna be mysterious. Everyone's talking about him. People that know him just love him. Hitchcock and De Palma made some great high school musicals. Ah, it's Tony, the cool kid in school. It, holy shit, it's Sam Kinison. How you doing? I'm just burning some homework. Sneak preview. High school students. Better hurry up, you're missing the EG Daily announcements. Detective Arbiger, oh, fuck that, he's Mitchell. Mitchell goes to see uh, Charles Napier. No, don't be in this. I don't give a damn if it's Jack the Ripper's birthday. Now look, I'm not sending three cops to some pumpkin prom looking for a psycho with a pumpkin head, a big nose, and a bunch of garden tools. Thank God Napier brings some class to this. How do you do? Your secretary has a magnificent butt. And that class lasted about five seconds. This guy is brought in to tell us the backstory of the lawnmower killer, which we've already been told several times. The lawnmower killer spent 13 years in an asylum and is gonna start killing people. It's like the movie knows that we're not paying attention. I love how the precinct has bullies and that Joe Don is the one being picked on. <laughs> Ooh, fight them off with your deadly Coors Light breath. Every now and then, something will get me. Like this science class, which is just a magic show. Patterns of argument and methods of representation, and of course, careful calculations that are logical. <laughs> Yeah, don't get too excited whenever you have a laugh at this movie, because immediately afterwards, something stupid will happen. I think this is the same high school from Screwballs, where everyone just fucks each other. And if you don't want another flashback, too bad. Oh, she couldn't be more than 15 or 16, but she was a whole woman. She hiked up her skirt inch by inch by inch, revealing her creamy, statutory thighs. Uh, the prosecution rests, your honor! Now I know why they're showing this to me. Sure, they already told me about their daughter dying, but now I know that Mitchell was dressed as a clown when he told the parents about it and made them balloon animals. Look, if it's about the razor blades and the apples again, it was an accident. I was shaving over the fruit and one of them dropped in. I'm sorry about the little boy and it won't happen again. I think this movie has worse problems than the killer, like incest razor blade dad and deadly lazy jokes. Oh, Tony's in the pea soup again. 
Hoo hoo, I bet I know where this is going. <laughs> Yep, just like in Repossessed. Everyone here is a creep, like Vice Principal Jeff Altman, who collects girls' panties and tortures students. <laughs> oh, look at him now. Yes, gentle as a lamb and blank as a fart. Comedy. Oh, there's been 20 bad jokes, so time for a good one. One which is even applicable to today's movies, where the film just tells us that a dream sequence is coming up and that we should use that time to get refreshments. Sorry, I already got those during the 30 flashbacks. Don't leave the movie yet, you'll miss important plot points. <laughs> Alfred Hitchcock Presents was a really great gang rape slasher film series. Back in the real world, uh, uh, was something found in her locker? What are you shooting at? A baby lawnmower. These jokes are so lame that not even the high school flasher wants any part of this school. And in case you didn't want this to lead to a car chase... <laughs> Tough shit, you're getting one anyway! Which of course ends with Joe Don making out with a high schooler in the back seat, so I guess he and the Flasher are really one in the same. At least the Flasher keeps to himself. I expect more out of Detective Statutory. <laughs> I bet I know where this scene is going. <laughs> Well, now I know that all four of the writers have the same cocaine dealer. Maybe I shouldn't get mad. The poster says that it's a motion picture made by, for, and about people like me. The movie thinks I'm a rapist? Stella Stevens should consider herself lucky. They could have thrown the SS Poseidon through her window. And as spoof films go, George Kennedy is a way better cop than a doctor. I'm stitching up Mr. Cooper. He just had a hysterectomy. Dr. Graves, Dr. Graves, Mrs. Cooper is ready for her hysterectomy in operating room 13. We're waiting for you. Oh boy, that wasn't supposed to happen. And can we get these perverts off school grounds? Now I've got suspects all over the place here. A geek, a loony, a weirdo, a jock. I even began to worry about my own son, little dick. I would be moved by the inspirational cheerleader speech, but when the lights dim, I can't tell if it's intentional or if it's that the lighting really is that bad. Not to mention, that is cheating, Missy! Speaking of cheating, yeah, go ahead and check the football team with a serum. No biggie. I'll be animal! <laughs> Let's get out of that field! There's no rule that says werewolves can't play high school football. I am not a mascot. I am a human being. Why? Meanwhile, Stella mocks certain members of the audience laughing during this film. <laughs> hmm, think I heard that same person in the audience for Old Fashioned. Romance begins to bloom between Elizabeth Daly and the Flasher. <laughs> she is so dead. Not enough rapes end with a dance off. And then he flashes her and they go to prom together. Uh, uh, hi, big guy. You want to go to the Halloween pumpkin prom with me? <laughs> you thought I was joking. Hey, do we have any other jokes for the bathtub scene? I don't know, just give her a big razor blade. 
and bring back incest, Dad. It worked like a charm before. This really is a movie for and about me. On the night of the Halloween prom, Tony is dressed like everyone's favorite superhero, Travolta Man. Don't ever, ever call me Anthony. Call me Mr. Schlangini. My friends like to call me the Schlang, you know? I'll be calling you Ford Fairlane, and that's the end of it. But unfortunately, that's not the end of the scene. Oh, oh not again. Oh, 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 oh. Mm, that sure is a big dick. Ooh, two hilarious dinner scenes in a row? You spoil me. I'm a Yankee Doodle Dandy! Yankee Doodle Doodle Die! Just like in Psycho 4. What? Three dinner scenes? Is this a Thanksgiving parody now? Any jokes for this scene? I don't know, just make his family black, I guess. Just when I thought I was missing the flashback scenes, they threatened to bring us another one. Quick, someone stop her! <laughs> Guess Mom's dead now. After this year's musical march in September, it's weird seeing a dance that's not under the threat of an old people boycott. I can't believe they could afford the band Wacko Boingo. Is anyone gonna die in this slasher parody? Well, I can just squeeze your head too, but I get pumpkin pie. Ooh, you put the pressure on me now, baby. I'm cold. Yeah, I'm taking the thing you need. Oh no! That guy. When E.G. Daly goes off to find her date, the flasher, she finds someone much better, the killer! Huh? <laughs> ah, her date was most likely gonna do that to her by the end of the night anyway. Like all good Mitchell cases, the ketchup blood serves as a mighty fine topping for his pocket hot dogs. Someone stop Tony before Brain Smasher a love story. No respect for school property! Oh! I mean... oh. It's really easy when the students just let the killer murder them. <laughs> so hilarious. <laughs> See? You need gas to laugh at this. Mary better get out of there because the killer is standing on, uh, a lawnmower, I guess? Makes sense that they call him the lawnmower killer. After all, he never kills anyone with a lawnmower. It's like if they named John Carpenter's Halloween Christmas. Good thing there's a bunch of guns in the vice principal's office. Why isn't this a parody film realistic? That shotgun blast would have killed him easily. Now, don't ask your dad for help. He'll molest you. Pretty. So pretty. Ooh. How did that happen? Let me see if I can put that. You've been a big help, Dad. This movie isn't very good. But thankfully, Norman was crowned the Mr. Adventure of this prom. All the mysteries are revealed, I think. The Flasher announces that he's the lawnmower killer, and now, uh, oh wait, this guy is saying that he's the lawnmower killer? Which one of you is Spartacus? I am the lawnmower killer, I'm not kidding. Oh, yeah, you couldn't sure. possibly be. Yes, 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 he really is the lawnmower killer. It'll never happen again. Oh, so silly. Oh, maybe the talking elephant did it. it. Wait a minute, a talking elephant? <laughs> Someone just take off the killer's mask. You. Oh, so the killer's Joe Don. Okay. Now that we know Joe Don is the killer, despite that meaning he'd have to be in two places at once, we can get to this hot prom night sex. Oh, God damn it! I didn't mean literally hot sex! Oh, damn, I was hoping space balls would pop out of his chest. Oh, it was a dream. You mean I could have been getting refreshments this whole time? Just mowing the lawn. Sure, Daddy. That's what you always say. 
And that's when the movie had a heart attack and died. Surely that means it should be over. And yes, I am calling you Shirley. Mr. George Kennedy. Ladies and gentlemen. I don't know what road we're going down here, but I know it's not going to be the destination I want. Lawnmowers do not kill people. People kill people. <laughs> you know what else didn't kill people with a lawnmower? The movie. Here's the shocking revelation about the 1982 film Wacko. It's really, 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 really bad. I don't know how much this movie costs, and I don't know how much the movie made. It's almost like this forgotten movie vanished off the face of the fucking earth. And much like the granola that the old lady next door put in my trick-or-treat bag, the movie is completely tasteless. Luckily, I got my hands on the PC version of the film. I think UCLA is a wonderful college for Rosie. I am respected everywhere. <laughs> Still no good. I, for one, will stick with real slasher movie parodies like Student Bodies, thank you very much. Perhaps this film would have better suited my interest if the comedy were pumpkin spice flavored. Will you give me that sign, Chief? I just realized we're a few weeks deep into our Halloween reviews, and I have yet to wear a costume. I mean, I guess I could wear, like, a seasonal suit or something like that, except I don't have any patches to put on this. It, huh? Spooky-licious Pop-Tarts. Sure, that'll, that'll do. Uh, uh. Perfect. I would eat them, but I don't want to get a thousand messages saying how weird it is to eat them cold. Today we're looking at a talking animal movie with the voice of Eric Roberts. Yes, there's more than one! This time it's called A Halloween Puppy. Uh, I guess I should say that sometimes it's called a Halloween puppy, other times you can find it under the title of a magic puppy. Starring not the same dog from this movie. That way someone could come across the movie and think that it's not a seasonal film so they can watch it regardless of it being October or not. That is brilliant. And by brilliant, I mean sleazy. And just who in the hell made this? To answer that, all you need to do is look at the box cover. Look familiar? It should. It's a David Dakota film whose family movie box art is similar to each other, just as every slasher cover from the mid-90s is similar to one another. I know what you might be thinking. Well, this is exactly the kind of movie we would get in a post-A-Talking-Cat world. Except you would be wrong. A Talking Cat was made in 2013, and this film was made in 2012, making A Talking Cat a product of a post-Halloween puppy world. Or, as the movie itself says, the great Halloween puppy adventure. This movie's not great. It's not about an adventure. It's debatable about whether or not it has a puppy in it. But it is on Halloween. Pick a fucking title so I'll know what to skip past on Netflix. Apparently the movie stars Eric Roberts as a dog that isn't in the movie. Christine DeBell as Herman Munster. Lucas Adams as... Please, I don't want to be in this. Ah, fuck it. Just use the Frankenstein's monster image twice. Now it's time to play dog or dinosaur. Doesn't matter, this beast also isn't in the film. This is just inspiring them to make a Valentine's puppy, and then they'll retitle it a love puppy. It was the Scarecrow who needed a heart, right? Isn't that how Wizard of Oz went? Why Google the word puppy when these credits show you all the images that would come up? Even David Dakota is wearing a costume. He's dressed as Mary Crawford. Oh yeah, and the answer to earlier is, it's a werewolf. You win nothing. Now the star of every Dakota movie, his house. Let's jump right into the action.
<laughs> what do you mean nothing happens in a Dakota movie? You see movement, don't you? This is Linda and Adam. They have a special mother-son relationship. Indeed. Well, I got you this. <laughs> I thought my son could appreciate a fully chewed chew toy. She thinks he's a dog. Meanwhile, in heaven, thanks for telling us the date, things are quite tough around this giant household. Okay, I'm not working the night shift at the pet hospital, so you can hang around here watching ghoul movies and playing video games all day. And eating pizza rolls. You live in a fucking mansion! Your shitter is bigger than my basement, and explaining it'll just make it worse! We live like people who got a great deal on a short-term rental because a formerly sick Pekingese had a very grateful owner who also just happened to be a real estate agent. Bullshit! Adam doesn't approve of his mother's boyfriend, Ted, but he sure loves himself. Bring me a present? No, it's a book. I see it's a book. You have a lot of them. I like to read. It's overrated. Don't make me angry. You won't like me when I'm angry. You're cute when you're mad. Well, it doesn't matter if it's one of Dakota's 1313 gay movies or if it's the family film. Someone's gonna get cocky. And I think Eric Roberts is only in this because he was promised dessert. Hi, gang. Hey, Ted. Okay. So, how's your week, Linda? Yeah, my week was fine. Good stuff. So, what movies do we have tonight? You are in the Pope of Greenwich Village. Eric Roberts, aside from being extremely talented, has one of the most fascinating movie careers of all time. He's a man with such a constant workload that you can see him on both ends of the movie spectrum. You want to see Eric Roberts in a Christopher Nolan film? You can. You want to see him in a David Dakota film? You can. Or how about a P.T. Anderson movie? Absolutely. A Human Centipede film? Totally! All within a few years of each other. And one thing that they all have in common is that Eric Roberts, despite the movie's lack of ambition, doesn't sleepwalk through them. Well, I mean, there must be places that you want to visit or things you want to do or places you want. I mean, you never really talk about yourself. Oh, baby. I'm boring. I'll do whatever you want to, but I'm happy. I don't want to mess with what we have. I love you. I'll be late. Gotta go. Have a good day. Me too. Okay. Budget schmudget. You hire Eric Roberts, you get Eric Roberts. More than I can say about these other characters, including Adam and his love interest Molly. Look at this. It looks cool. Kind of like the Necromicon. The Necromicon? Do we not have enough in the budget for another line reading? What? The Necromicon. Never mind, I'll just show you the movies. Yeah, then maybe you can pronounce it right. Molly tells him about her spell book, but I'm more distracted by her shooing flies away from her face. There's also a couple bullies in town known as the twins. You can tell because they don't fucking look alike, nor do they look the same age. Halloween, huh? I like Halloween. I like seeing little kids scream. And they may be child murderers, but at the least, they're thieves. Uh, I, I'm, I'm kind of using it. Like my brother said. We're taking some of your stuff. I'll be a good little neighbor. Uh-huh. Okay. Hey, cops, I'm being robbed. End of predicament. And worse yet, no one stops them from taking his shit. Sorry, bud. We can go get some more Halloween decorations later. Or you can kick the twins' ass for coming onto your property and stealing from you. Adam brushes it off by saying the box was full of moldy newspapers. Except it so wasn't. And get used to these fucking transitions. Linda wants to get closer to Ted, who people deem as boring and predictable, so they plan a trip to a cabin for the weekend. Oh, I will make it up to you, I promise, thank you so much. And I guess they're taking a pumpkin with them. This poor girl, however, just has to listen to Adam bitch all day. I like watching as many horror movies as I can on three separate screens while eating piles of candy pretending that it's human flesh. Now, now I don't have to be able to do any of those things. You're helping your mom out, though. You're doing a good thing. Yippee. You're a good guy. That's why I like you. Uh, honey, I also had to say this to the girl and a talking cat, but I don't think he's into you. But he is into drama club. Why? Why? 
I'll find something to cheer you up. I promise. Why? Yes, why? Why the ghost transition? Ted has to pick his car up from the shop. Don't know why. He could use the car that's already in Dakota's house. But he is thrilled about going to the cabin for very zen reasons. Well, that sounds pretty nice. Do they have a hammock there? Or a rope swing? They might. Cool. Eric has it in his contract that all of his movie sets must have at least one of those things. Molly and Adam are hanging out in an abandoned rainforest cafe so they can play with the spell book. I'm curious where you got all these candles and potions and stuff though, if this is all just mumbo jumbo. It's just... interesting. It's not. But then shit gets serious. Okay, we say these words. Ted. Klaatu. Barada. Nikto. Oh, yes, I know that spell. It's the one that changes the channel from a Halloween puppy to Army of Darkness. Not only are they not on set at the same time, but I don't think they're even in the same state. And that is not the funniest part of this scene. Adam, Molly, what are you kids doing? Uh, nothing. An art project. Yeah, for science. Neato. No one has ever been this excited to be in a David Dakota movie. Oh, and there's more. Apparently no one saw this happen, as they laugh it off and Ted goes to bed. Oh, why am I so tired? Beats me. Over here it's midnight, but on your end it's high noon. Pumpkin. By the way, we're 25 minutes in, and there's not a single puppy in sight. But there is a ghost. I guess the ghost is the signal that Ted has now been turned into a dog. Adam! Get down here! Adam! Linda! Oh, hi. Sorry I fell asleep on the couch. That doesn't look like a puppy. And it does look like the dog on the cover, which is more than I can say about a talking cat. A Halloween puppy follows Tequila and Benetti rules and not Puchinski rules, where in this case his dialogue is internal and no one can actually hear him. I'm pretty sure what we are hearing is Eric reacting to finding out what role he's playing. I'm a puppy? Oh! What? No one seems to question where Ted is or where this dog came from. We have a little guest for the show. How so? A stray puppy came by last night. That's weird. Maybe someone dropped him off because they know your mom's a vet. Maybe. Yeah, that's how that works. Hey, honey, the dog is sick. Oh, just drop him off on the vet's porch. Oh, nice outfits, guys. Is it yesterday already? So we decided to come back for some more Halloween props because the box you gave us is filled with rotten newspapers. No, it wasn't! This whole turning into a dog thing seems to have really improved Ted's day. Hey, 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 what's that smell? Oh boy, everything smells so good! Oh god, I like it in the car! Yes, I do. Ooh, 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 something like a bacon and waffles. Oh boy, can I shoot my head out the window? Please, please, I love the car! I hope to someday achieve the natural high that Eric is on in this. The movie has other David Dakota familiars as well, such as water, steamy mountain, and yes, rambly driving scenes just like the one in A Talking Cat. Like, who wants an actual Zombies pumpkin crawling there. out of the ground? What? I want a freaking jack-o'-lantern. We can carve one. You if may we have time. Ja jack-o'-lantern. Did you bring this up? Didn't think so, because we're out in the middle of nowhere. Oh, don't oh, you're just oh, big. You're oh. not chubby. <laughs> you're not chubby puppy. You're not chubby puppy. Oh my gosh. Oh. Oh. Oh, well, that's one way to get this movie to 76 minutes. They've arrived at Dakota location number two. This is way different than in A Talking Cat. In that movie, it was Christine DeBell who lived in the cabin house. Another thing that makes this movie different? Oh my word, that is the stuff, yes! To the left, to the left, oh ho ho, belly rub for the wind, oh yeah. Why does this movie have a sex scene? Eric Roberts' talking animal audio is a bit better this time around. It doesn't sound like he's being recorded off of an answering machine. I like your woods. I always have. You don't get me wrong. 
I like to be indoors in a nice fluffy bed as much as anyone. Plus, he just sounds happier in this. Wow, look at this, a tail. Okay, that's pretty nifty. Turning into a dog is the greatest thing to happen to Ted. Or it's the greatest thing to happen to Eric Roberts. Pumpkin. Molly and Anna meet up with Cindy Brady? No need to act surprised. It credits her on the cover as Brady Bunch's Susan Olsen. Oh, what? No boy who stole the elephant, Susan Olsen? They talk more about the spell casting, but screw that. <laughs> Meanwhile, on YouTube. Oh, it's my toy. I got my toy. Oh, boy, I'll get it. I'll get it. <laughs> Look at me. I'm fetching. <laughs> Why couldn't it have been Eric Roberts voicing Benji and Oh Heavenly Dog? At least Eric doesn't sound like he wants to hang himself after every line. And I think he might have an erection. I don't know what Ted's real crime was. Mom, your boyfriend is totes boring, so I'm gonna turn him into a dog. That'll show him. Except it really doesn't. Thank God someone here knows exactly what spells these are. I mean, we didn't do it right. Besides, we were just fooling around. Honey, you know as well as I do, there's no such thing as fooling around. Oh yeah? Then explain blue balls to me. You can cut this sexual tension with a spork. You know, Molly here is quite the wealth of information on these things. You might ask her about it someday. Yeah, I probably should. After he asks out the twins, and when they get done with their stupid shtick. Oh my! What? Oh, it's happening! What, what, what is Haven't it? you noticed? What? Your hands have turned what? into tentacles! <laughs> <laughs> if you're wondering what drugs the actors are on, maybe it's a clue that one of the characters is named Molly. Who knew? Chewing on stuff could be so relaxing. Uh, nine, 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 nine. Or that the dog is on grass. And shouldn't she be wondering where her boyfriend is? Okay, you could put the dog in the movie, but half the running time has to be someone petting him. Water. Ah, good, she's done playing with the dog. Ted should have been here by now. He hasn't called, I can't reach him on his cell. You would have realized this if you didn't spend the last 12 hours dry humping the dog. Now the serious part where Linda opens up about Ted. Let's see, how do I put this? Um. Have you ever wanted a boy to notice you in a romantic way? Yes. I think I know what that's like. Yeah, so does Adam. So she wants Ted to notice her more, which causes Ted to say nothing. He has more to say about grass. Chipmunks! Okay, okay, not chipmunks. I need to focus. There has to be chipmunks! Man, I don't know why, but I hate chipmunks. Oh, well, that's why. He's ADHD as hell. Witch, water, book. I'm a bit ADHD too. I wonder if they used the same spell book to turn Adam into bargain bin Bieber. It should never have come to light. It's okay, Molly. It can't be that bad. It is. I know. That's why I'm here. To tell you how bad it is. I guess the spell worked because they did it on Halloween, except they did it the night before. And while this banter is reminding me of other movies like The Day the Earth Stood Still and Army of Darkness, the explanation here is one of a kind. You didn't say Nikto? No, I didn't. See, we couldn't have transformed anyone. Perhaps. As long as no one said Nito. Wait, what? Nito! What? He was turned into a dog through the power of outdated slang? Poppycock! So to turn him back, they have to say the words in reverse order. I can't be certain if you'll ever have the power to change him back again. And if that's the case, then he could be a puppy forever. I don't think he would mind that. And no need to get more stupid, movie. If you're some wisdom-dispensing witch, prove it. Okay, let's go. <laughs> All that proves is that she has after effects. So they want to borrow the dog so they can reverse the spell while saying that Ted's car broke down. The reactor spar snapped while he was driving and then mm. truck jackknifed and a whole load of potatoes on the road. Real smashy mash. 
That doesn't make any sense. A little late for that complaint! Pumpkins and ghosts. But the real climax, however... I want to know. I don't know, but I'm sure it's gonna be great. I'm sure it'll be a great surprise. I don't know if I... I don't know if I love surprises. Okay, I love surprises. I can't wait. Oh my god, it's gonna be so fun. Definitely got a surprise for you. I'm sure it'll be great. More rambly driving. It's okay if this movie is 60 minutes long. It doesn't need to push 80 minutes. If you squint your eyes, at least this shot looks like it belongs in a movie. Ted had better make all this up to Linda. Linda, one way or another, I'm gonna surprise the heck out of you. Oh uh, yes, with a ghost. Or by shitting in her shoes. Oh, what a great shot. That's totally at night. Sure hope they use this in a talking cat. They're ready to reverse the spell, except the twins show up to steal the book, and also the Sasquatch costume from 1313 Bigfoot Island. Only one way to get their book back. Where's the book? I'm sorry, Adam. They took it. Who? The twins. The twins. They said if we want it back, we have to go through their haunted house. Why? Call the cops! They're stealing your shit! Wow, really spooky, in a we're getting ready to bug bomb this place kind of way. This haunted mansion is so lame, even Eddie Murphy would star in it. Turns out they don't really want the book, they want an orgy. And they might be murderers. You're gonna lay down our altar and be our victim for the week. Yeah, and we're gonna kill you over and over again all night and spray you with fake blood and guts and stuff. If you're gonna kill them, why do you need fake blood? For fuck's sake, just take the book and get the hell out of there! Ah! We're all gonna die! Nikki, save me! Or do that? What the fuck? So I guess she's a witch? 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 Oh, God damn my shitty timing! Now they can create a spell that will end this movie. Puppy Ted is gone! Uh, great. Now once more, but act like you give a shit. I don't know if the spell turned Ted back into a person, but it turned the sky from nighttime to broad fucking daylight. Where could Ted be? Oh, wow! Hey! Ah, uh, good. Ted's back, but he's still high off of that grass. But at least he's learned to express his feelings and be a much better boyfriend. You deserve a man who will break out of his comfort zone and encourage you to do the same. Especially. Stop being so damn charming, Eric Roberts. This movie doesn't deserve you. The twins show up to return the stolen items, but they are permanently stuck in nighttime. And Ted is stuck acting like someone who's still a dog. More. Higher. 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 Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. If this movie doesn't end with Eric licking his own balls, I'm going to consider it a huge disappointment. Now's the part where Adam has to learn to swim to impress her. Okay, Ted's not a dog anymore. Why is this still going? It can't be for the romance. So, does this mean you're my girlfriend? It better, or I'll turn you into a frog. Oh, will you? I'd buy him turning into a frog more than I buy this relationship. Oh, did I say the movie was 76 minutes? I meant 68 minutes with 8 minutes of ending credits, because there wasn't enough stock dog footage, apparently. Well, I must say that this was not a very well-made movie, but I could be wrong in my assumption, since the back of the box clearly states that it's fun for the whole family, says no one. I want to punch that quote more than I want to punch this kid's Oh, this guy! Am I right? face. You gotta love any DVD that not only doesn't have an insert, but also, mm, has that distinct new car smell. That is, if you poured gasoline on that new car. You may be wondering, what's the worst film? Halloween puppy or a talking cat? Does it matter? Okay, this one has on-screen Eric Roberts, better audio, a little less water, but more shitty day for night, and no Ted licking his own balls, and more endless driving scenes. But it was shorter, and again, there was on-screen Eric Roberts acting like a younger version of Creed Bratton, so sure, I guess it's better. You know what it's also better than? A Medea Halloween!
but I sure am holding out hope for an Easter Bunny puppy. We've got one more movie this Halloween, and clearly that means it'll be on the producer's cut of a Halloween puppy. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> this movie doesn't have a producer. <laughs> Does anyone know any good horror movies? Oh! 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 If Tyler Perry's A Medea Christmas made you want to punch the baby Jesus, don't worry, this one will make you want to punch a baby that's dressed as the baby Jesus. Why it chose that as a Halloween costume, I have no idea. Tyler Perry's Boo Tyler Perry A Medea Tyler Perry Hollow Tyler Perry Ween was made as a response to a throwaway joke in Chris Rock's Top 5 in which Rock's character has a movie opening opposite a fictitious Tyler Perry movie called Medea's Haunted House. It was such a funny one-off joke that the powers that be figured, hey, why not turn that into an actual thing? Here's the thing, though. That movie was written by Chris Rock. This one is written by Tyler Perry. Not the same thing. But as the Halloween movies have always told us, everyone is entitled to one good scare. But there ain't nothing scarier than a Tyler Perry Halloween movie and a successful box office. So let's find out what geniuses greenlit this thing. rather be thrown in a lion's den. Oh, Tyler Perry Studios did this? Thanks. I was expecting the Scott Free logo to pop up. This is such a disappointment. I'm normally a huge fan of Hong Kong cinema. I know I haven't gotten into the plot yet, but be patient. I'll get to it just as soon as the movie does. We open at the fraternity Alpha Sigma YouTube. This movie is already making Jesus fall asleep. This frat wants to hold the greatest Halloween fraternity party ever. And why is Halloween so important to this frat's reputation, Bean? Because you can wear masks while murdering co-eds? I'm sure this is a very important scene. Um, should you be dancing? I think someone may have been killed. But oh shit, chicks, bro! Chicks! Hi. Hey, I'm Ronaldo, but my friends call me whores. <laughs> Your friends call you whores? The bros want the girls to come to their party, and who can turn down this invitation? So y'all probably never seen a dude before in real life. This right here, this is what a dude looks like. Don't go with them, you're gonna get raped. But Tiffany has the embarrassment of having Tyler Perry Bryan as her father. You bring it, I want you to bring it so badly, you know. I will whoop your ass, do you understand that? I will whoop your ass. It's dead. You're not playing Medea right now. What are you doing? Here we get a hint that this movie is not going to be about Halloween or haunted houses at all. There's no room in there for all of us. The house is right there, we're just going to walk. Tiffany, get in the car. It's right there. We can walk. Come on, come on. It's about parenting. Scary. And here Bella Thorne is dressed as Julia Roberts from Pretty Woman for nothing? Brian is sick of all those horny frat boys eyeing his daughter. Tiffany, I'm going to tell you one more time. Do not take your uniform off until you get into this house. Right? Horny guys hate school uniforms. But the important thing is that she respects her dad. School. It is school. Right. Do not mock me. Do not mock me. Tiffany. Tiffany. Stop. You didn't stop talking. So basically, this whole conflict can be solved with a quick slap upside the back of the head. Every actor is doing stutter acting, and it's typically the fifth time they've repeated the same line. Uh, my dad, well, I think he'd actually be okay with it, actually, because every Halloween we just go to church. I'm an adult. I can say what I want to say in this house. Do you understand? I, 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 can, I can say what I want to say, and what I'm telling you right now is this. This movie only took six days to make, which is fine, but I'm not sure they worked with a completed script. Uh-oh, someone's getting a text. He's texting me. Who's texting you? Jonathan, the cute frat boy. That character doesn't exist. Dad, however, knows that she wants to go to the frat party, so he must find her a babysitter immediately. 
Saddle up, sugar! Next time I'll tell you the story of how I slapped Mussolini across the face! for that business he pulled in Albania. Hey, wait a minute, since when is Fat Grandma black? And here's Tyler Perry Medea, the moral compass of the film. When I was growing up, do you know what I had to do for candy? Do you know what I had to do for candy? What, Mabel? I had to give up candy to get candy. Medea was once a prostitute? It's not a 401k, it's a whole 401k. That's when I got a whole 401k. Oh. Yeah, from back in the day when I was stripping. I wonder when why. I was on that pole. Don't want to picture that. Taking candy from kids, though, uh, that I want to see. Bam. Bam, I saw you drop a little piece of candy up there and take four or five pieces out of that baby bag. What the hell? I think a majority of these scenes may be the first and only takes these actors were given. And get used to every other scene taking a fucking eternity. Characters ramble and ramble, and the extra just looks really confused. That's weird. I thought I was in a movie. They even get caught stealing the candy, and Medea gets pissed when the parents give them shit over taking the candy, which they did. You need to have them trick or treat for a damn treadmill or an elliptical. Mama! It's okay. It's okay. Come, it's on, okay. come on, boy. Come on, boy. Come on, boy. Point taken. Is this scene over yet? What the hell is that? What is that? Some damn person acting a fool dressed like a clown. Yeah, I don't yeah, like this. Stop coming up to them. You're just making the scene longer. They better not come over here with their foolishness. That's what I know. Come on over here. My friend is scared. Don't come over here with that foolishness. Don't come over here. Don't come over, over here, here with, with that, that damn foolishness. Box. I'm telling you right now. Don't come over here. You better not come over here with this foolishness. Yeah, I just dressed like a damn clown. Every line is repeated to make this movie length. Medea punches the Jack in the Box, and given that it's run by Tyler Perry, Medea's brother Tyler Perry Joe, and their friend Hattie, what the fuck did they think was gonna happen? Meanwhile, at the Myers house from Halloween 5. Hey, Guam! Oh, Miss Hattie, how you doing? Hey, give me a hug, Guam! Oh, no, oh, no. What, he a grown ass man? He can take it? I don't wanna take it, Miss Hattie. You can Hattie. take it if you want to, Guam. I don't wanna take it, Miss <laughs> Is that a 30 year old dressed as Miss Clara from War Room? Cause that's the only thing that makes sense. Now they can kick back, relax, and move this plot right along. Joe, don't no woman have no prostrate? Maybe you know damn well you got a prostate. Uh, is Medea, uh, t the hell was that? Oh, did you come here for a haunted house movie? Fuck that. Let's debate Medea's strict parenting versus Brian's more lenient parenting for what feels like half the movie's running time. And judging from these lines, it needs every single one of those minutes. Whoop-a, whoop-a, whoop-a ass, whoop-a ass, whoop-a ass, whoop-a ass, whoop-a ass, whoop-a ass, whoop ass, whoop ass. You got to drop the damn hammer. Drop the hammer on them. You better hold up, she gonna explode a prostate. I am not taking my daughter on the roof and throwing her off. Bullshit! 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 This movie has so many lessons, I now know not to throw children off of rooftops. Guess the scene should end now. Oh, God damn it! Stop entering the room! You could cut 14 minutes out of this scene and still have a 90-minute movie. At some point, I think it's okay for the padding to stop. Okay, so Brian leaves, and now the scene can end. And this Halloween stuff just give me the creeps. She, like, she don't like Halloween. Mm -mm, don't like it at all. Just give me the creeps, but now I'm all right. Hey. I don't think I'm the audience for this. The girls plan to trick the old people into going to bed early, because old people usually stay up really late. At least now we're in a different location. Oh, fuck, we're back in the den? My dinner with Andre has more locations than this. You don't understand. This card comes from Mr. Wilson, the man that died in this house on Halloween. Yeah, he killed himself when a group of people went into his den and wouldn't leave. Want to put the old people to sleep? Show them Single Moms Club. That's gonna blow my high. Hi, you smoke marijuana? Hey, I got a prescription! As long as this scene is, I gotta commend them on waiting until minute 546 to bring in a pot joke. What you want? What the hell with that? Ah, uh, fuck it. Can I have some of that weed? That should do it. Now she's all dressed up to squirt ketchup onto a burger. 
Medea's never gonna figure out that they're gone. Oh, she figured out that they're gone. Well, she better go out right away and find Tiffany. Well, where's she going to? Probably over there to that frat party. I knew it. You come out over there for all them fine, sexy college men just me. Or hang out in this room for another hundred minutes. Seven days later, they find the frat party. It's my costume, I'm Peter Pan. Duh. <laughs> She said she pissed her pants, you know she said she pissed her pants. <laughs> On the plus side, they're probably not the most annoying ones there. It is important to find the missing teens, but priorities, and by that I mean boobs. You wanna see it? Ooh. Yes, sweet. Yes, behold paradise. Ooh. Right before your eyes. <laughs> this movie opened the same weekend as Ouija Origin of Evil, and this is the movie that was number one at the box office. Trick or treat! Man, old people are so out of touch. What the hell y'all got on? Lord have mercy. Your mama know you're dressing like this? She picked uh out my outfit. Your mama picked out your outfit? Uh, yeah. Damn, she must be one of them housewives. Oh, sorry, should they let drunky McGropers Field fondle them for several minutes? Now to hide in the safest place, the Broski's bedroom. Wait, I don't know about that. It wouldn't be a frat party unless someone there coincidentally knows a celebrity for no reason. Give it up for Tyga! Yeah! Suspension of disbelief ruined! If you ask me, this movie needs to get its ass to church! <laughs> old person dancing, and the actress isn't even that old! She's just dressed like she is! <laughs> even Medea is moving and grooving with the music. I see this ending well. Kids these days and their Tyga Rick Springfield claptrap. Well, we tried. Let's go home and let the kids die. Don't worry, I'll send your niece's skin in the mail. Oh, please don't get awkward. You're, you're 17. Yes. Years old. Yeah. In human years. Yes. He's never felt his dick get this hard in his life. Oh, thank God, there's no cutting back to the dam. Go throw me down in that bush and bam, you sitting there sitting there getting high with them damn bosses, bam, you wasn't even gonna help me. You supposed to be fighting for me. Y'all supposed to have my back. Oh. I am once again shocked that this movie took six days to make. I would have guessed three tops. Something tells me this isn't the first time they've had underage girls in their room. Hold up, she's not 17. Does this look like a 17 year old? No, it doesn't. Wait, how old are you guys? 18. Cool, cool. Um, there's still the matter of underage drinking. Speaking of, the cops do show up and ask them to present their IDs. None of them look younger than 35. Even Tyga's leaving. He's got another gig at a rock and roll Hardee's. Then the YouTubers vow vengeance against Medea. They're gonna give her movie a very negative review. That is exactly why I'm here. If you wanted a bald YouTuber who wears a backwards hat, I could think of at least one other person you could have asked. Oh no, someone's overhearing their plan. Doesn't matter. Good luck getting them out of the den. Ain't no way. What the hell is that? Now, what the hell is that? Wait! Please, there ain't no ghost in this house. Ain't no ghost gonna be knocking on the damn door. Does that make sense to you? A ghost to damn knock on the door? I ain't going to that door. This ain't my house. I ain't going nowhere near that door. Go on, go on, get it, bruh. What the hell? Someone just answer the fucking door! 73 minutes later, someone answers the door. Hey, hallelujah. You speak in tongues? I went to college. And I love Jesus. <laughs> yes, I do too. We all do too. Yes. Even when this movie goes somewhere, it still goes nowhere. Boy, Tiffany's in big trouble. That happens. God wants you to stop making this movie. I'm sure you can end this scene on a stupid joke. I believe in you, movie. It is kind of shitty in you. What? You did what to yourself? It's shitty in you. What are you saying? It's shitty in you. She's saying cold, honey. She's saying it's chilly. 
Bushwhack. No, no, I don't need to see a shower scene with Aunt Bam. The hell is this? This is where the Amityville ghosts just gave up. They're ghosts that just simply want to live in retirement and force the TVs to show nothing but dog videos. We interrupt your regularly scheduled programming to bring you this special notice. I'm Mr. Wilson. Mr. Wilson! This movie makes Ernest Scared Stupid look like Halloween. Any of the Halloween movies. I'm surprised they don't explain this as being Joe's farts that are shaking the house. Now, Joe, stop playing games on these old ladies up there. I ain't no playing no damn jokes, I'm playing with myself. Don't wanna picture that! I guess the movie does answer some of my questions. If she don't come back, I just want y'all to know. That's a dude. You are ruining the mystery of the Medea movies! Oh hey, an attic! There's gotta be at least 50 unused Tyler Perry scripts in here. I understand why they wanted to release it so quickly, but IT Chapter 2 is really disappointing. A remake of Clown House is trying to break in. Whatever you do, don't open that door. I'll give it this. It's scarier than the Bye Bye Man. Hotwire! Bam. What kind of lady do you think I am? I'm a lady. I don't know how to hotwire a car. You are a prostitute, apparently. This movie is so padded that it stops to take a phone call. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! <laughs> I pray it on it. Oh, so I can't answer my phone when I'm in the theater, but the movie can answer its phone? Even though we heard the conversation about Tiffany's friend being at church, don't worry, Medea still explains the conversation we just heard. And then this happens. Wait, 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 wait. What the hell? Welp, Uncle Joe's about to be fucked by a clown! Careful, movie. You're coming dangerously close to being obnoxious. Got me going down here to church, you know? And that damn day wasn't even up there. You ain't got to get back home, Biff, that girl. That crazy as hell. She is something else, I'm gonna man. think that old she's that clown gonna be the least. Oh, God, can we go back to the clown porn? And here is how the movie was sold in every single trailer. Ghosts, goblins, zombies, you name it. All of whom are chasing after Medea. That is not what this movie is. <laughs> they didn't treat you, they just tricked you. Oh no, somebody help me, I just need Jesus to come somebody pray for me. What I do, what I do, somebody need to pray for me. Oh, I need, I need Jesus, I need to... Come for the zombies, stay for the salvation. It's explained that the frat boys wanted to get revenge on Medea, so instead of just going to another house to drink, they staged this Cirque du Soleil zombie invasion, broke into their house, fucked with the TV, and somehow did this shit with the mirror. They hacked into the TV, the lights, the plumbing. That was all them. Oh, fuck you! And there's more twists. I'm gone right now. Hey, you just got saved, Miss Medea. Sometimes getting saved like a bad perm, Reverend. It just don't take. <laughs> what is happening? Even Joe knows what's going on. He kidnapped Jesus and forced him into acting in long-ass sequences in the den. Brian comes home for another den scene, and even though it's nighttime outside, I'm pretty sure the interiors go on so long that it's now dawn. Now perhaps he's learned to be a stricter parent. I told you not to go. Mm, so I did. Get over it. Hardly. Then we wouldn't get to see Medea and her friends beat the shit out of her. They're giving her the ultimate punishment. They're kicking her out and making her live with the frat boys. Apologize. I'm sorry, Dad. Mean it. I'm sorry. Mm, great. So can we just go watch Gone Girl now? Uh, there's another knock at the door. It's obviously daylight. Oh, no, just kidding. It's still nighttime. Oh, but there's one more trick left. They convince her that her friend has disappeared, and then they arrest her. <laughs> and worse yet, Alpha Sigma YouTube got their videos demonetized. I'm sure this revenge plan won't go overboard. formed a suicide pact after burning everything in the house. Lesson learned. 
They're keeping this prank truly authentic. They immediately put them on a bus to prison. No Miranda rights, no trial, just off to co-ed jail. Who crying? <laughs> Homie, you gonna hug a man from the back. Nothing wrong with that, though. Good hugging in the shower, soap flying everywhere. So romantic. Where they're being raped by Huel from Breaking Bad? Oh my god, this just keeps getting worse. <laughs> Tell me about it. You know, you could have just put liquid heat on their crotch. No need to blow a year's pay on staging this prison bus riot. Okay, everyone, come on out. You're not really gonna get raped. <laughs> oh, and I'm not dead. I love you. And it all ends with there being zero heroes and everyone gets arrested. We found that one in the house. That's right. <laughs> I'm not joking. They all get arrested. Now let's go home and watch a more dignified movie like The Worst Witch. This movie has the balls to put boo in the title. Despite negative reviews, the movie earned an A from CinemaScore. You know, CinemaScore, the electoral college of movie feedback. And the movie was such a box office hit that a mere year later we're getting a sequel. Maybe actual ghosts and goblins will show up this time. Or you could just reenact the events of the first movie at home and hang out in your den for 90 minutes while cutting out coupons and talking about the old days. You know, like when Halloween movies used to have fucking monsters in them. Unless... Unless Tyler Perry has been the monster all along? Sit down. I am not hitting my child. I know I probably should have reviewed this movie on the actual day after Halloween, but that's okay, because this movie has absolutely nothing to do with the movie or the holiday Halloween. It is not referenced, it is not mentioned, it doesn't even take place in a single day. Hell, it's not even a horror film! But you wouldn't know that from the poster, which reads, The real horror began the day after Halloween. No, it didn't. Laurie Strode probably slept for hours that day. Oh, and it's also one of the don't movies, apparently. And the killer may be the same one from Pieces. What the movie really is, is a 1979 Australian exploitation film, more often called Snapshot or One More Minute, and it stars Sigrid Thornton as a hairdresser turned model who begins working for a skeevy agency and is stalked by her ice cream truck driving boyfriend. Just like in Halloween. When the movie was released here in the United States in October of 1980, it was renamed The Day After Halloween, clearly to ride off of the success of The Shining. Oh, and sometimes it's also referred to as The Night After Halloween. It can't even decide on which time of day it isn't even taking place. Hell, given the plot, the movie could also be called The Other Eyes of Laura Mars. So put on your Halloween costumes, or don't. Doesn't really matter with this one. Hey, hey, silly movie, I'm over here! Those are either flashlights, or Johnny Five is drunk. Well, they're just throwing us right into this emergency. This is that Halloween where everyone decided to go as the killer from My Bloody Valentine. I sure hope they don't discover I've been burying human bones. Oh, thank God all this ice cream will put out the fire. Plus, there'll be some chip witches for me and the boys. Someone is in big trouble. Well, that was intense. Look, I don't really know what's going on either. Oh my god, a leftover Halloween decoration. This is not the hot fireman calendar I was asking for. So, which title of the movie are we gonna get on this copy? Hmm. Okay. 
Oh, great. The movie's filmed in Santa's Christmas elf named Calvin Vision. This is hairdresser Angela. This customer has been waiting with shampoo in their hair for hours. Glad you could make it. Thanks, Australian Tony Monero. Shouldn't you be carrying a paint can? Anyway, we have a new client, Soap Star McDisco Diva. She found a parking space on the corner of 70s and fucking 70s. Madeline here offers Angela a job to be a model. Maybe she can dance, too. That way we could also call it the day after Suspiria. But what about her current job? Madeline! Will you keep your voice down? She'll talk how she damn well likes, you pathetic faggot. Sure, that may sound bad, but in Australia, that word means corn cob pipe. Not really sure why she called him that. And did someone say fudge sickle? <laughs> The ice truck killer from Dexter is super lost. He's not even in the same continent. Welcome, Angela, to the School of Inflatable Women. <sighs> oh yeah, well I can do this with my thumbs. Here's our photographer who also takes pictures of dead rodents. What exactly is coming up? Oh, a job, of course. Isn't it? Right. God, old iPhones were inconvenient. This was back when cameras themselves looked like they were photobombing you with a middle finger. Holy shit, we need to get out of here. I bought a dream sickle from this guy, and it turned out to be an ice cream sandwich. He's horrible at taking orders. Apparently, the ice cream truck driver is her ex-boyfriend. What the hell, you gave up free frozen Snickers for life? The guy is even bothering the neighborhood kids. What did he want? He says he's gonna knock shit out of you. Becky? Well, I wouldn't blame him if he did, the way you treat him. Stupid chain-smoking old women 13-year-olds. Despite being offered an amazing opportunity to be a model, Angela just complains all the time. I should have been at work two hours ago. <sighs> My mother will kill me if I lose that job. Could you stop posing as a wet blanket? Her photo shoot has professional photographers, creepy old lurkers with pipes, and her own theme song. Angela, you thought it over, but your eyes still show the fears. Pfft, that's not Angela's theme. It's just what I've been looking for. Ah, there. I bet I can guess the ending. And of course, this is the kind of movie to throw in a random lounge act in the middle of it. Whoa, boppery bop, a lazy jay. Your Johnny Charo Halloween costume sucks. They're having a lot of laughs here, but this poor sap has to be forced drank alcohol. Guess it is pretty tough sitting through this one-man show of Victor Victoria. What kind of place is this? It cuts to these two for five seconds, and then he's Captain Hook now. Sir, this is the day after Halloween. You can lose your costumes. No matter, let's move on to Club Cocaine, where our specials are cigarettes, putting your weight on it, and more cocaine. Things are really going to get funky when her former boss becomes king of Saturday night. Say, are you as adequate in bed as you are on the dance floor? It may be the day after Halloween, but the fever is still burning. Do you like women touching you, John? Huh? Do you like pretty women putting their hand there, huh? Well, that'll teach Ron Burgundy to report the dance floor news with his dick. She should probably have stayed there. Now we get to meet her psycho ex-boyfriend, Daryl. Why can't you just let go? You're my girl, aren't you? Jesus, this movie has taught me the valuable lesson of never going outside because everyone's a creep. But just because you've been stalking me doesn't mean you can't give me a ride home. Now let me out of here. I had no idea someone named Mr. Whippy would be so quick to whip out his dick. Any creepy final words for the night? A mother guppy will eat her babies. What's that supposed to mean? I'm gonna need a restraining order and two push pops, please. Here, stay with the creepy photographer instead. What exactly is it? It's Bermuda cool, lurching out of the sea, stripped in, montage, technical stuff. The day after Halloween. 
Ha, ah, what a lovely November 2nd morning. Must be what day it is now, I guess. I'm just assuming every breakfast in this universe comes with coffee and a flasher. The editing is trying hard to tell me who the real stalker is. <laughs> It's not every day you run into Howdy Doody at the cruising bar. After her photo spread is released, she's getting all kinds of looks. Walt Disney here is very impressed. Do you mind? I'm trying to watch this amazing show. You got to tell me what you got to look so good. That needs to happen. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, no. Tonight, the role of Eddie from Rocky Horror will be played by Marlon Brando's corpse. You two just keep on talking. I'm going to continue smoking my 70s. I've never seen a thriller filmed in rich Corinthian leather. Your pictures were a huge success, darling. We want to pick you up at the modeling agency of Grabby, Gropey, and Squeezy. I see all of this going well. Tell me, Dr. Wheel, what's the matter with me? I'm wrinkled, Mr. Dawn, and called a rare disease. As we return to the day before Friday the 13th, thank God her mom is here to side with the stalker. I do regard myself as a pretty fair judge of character. I can at least understand his behavior, but as for yours... Believe me, Mum, that's hysterical. Thanks, 70s Mom. Old school parenting. Be nicer to your stalker, you whore. If Angela is crying, it's because all the discount candy was bought from the store. Also, because she clearly just ate a Nightmare King before going to bed. Good news is, she has an apprenticeship at Stately Wayne Manor. I'm surprised the Madeline didn't ring you. Well, I'm not exactly on the phone. You're not Batman! That's Batman. Despite their age difference, her date with Victor from The Young and the Restless is going great. He even offers her a role in a movie. Don't get too excited. It's for the day after Rob Zombie's Halloween. It's just 90 minutes of picking ticks out of your beard. Sleazy producer guy fakes a phone call in order to get Angela to stay? Classic sleazy producer guy. She says they're going to be there till all hours. So, she suggests you stay the night and she'll run you home first thing in the morning. I see no reason not to trust you, Australian Harvey Weinstein. <laughs> Shit, I put a roofie in my own drink! Yeah, yeah, these pictures are great, but they'd be even better if you were naked and stuffed with cantaloupe. <laughs> you should just be naked. Just kidding. <laughs> be naked. And uh, now perhaps uh, one with the arm down a little. Just a uh, hint more breast. God, I hope her stalker shows up to save her. Is Madeline really coming home tonight? What's wrong, Andrew? Is she? What on earth are you insinuating? Oh, nothing, Mr. Cosby. This all seems legit. Luckily, she gets the fuck out of there and is much safer here in her attic apartment with a strange man in her bed. Still better company than Count Rapula. I'm sorry that you found the one animal that I didn't make a code out of. <laughs> but seriously, you should give Rufulor another chance. What am I going to do with that child? I have to watch him every minute. All he would have wanted to do is take a little peek at your titties. It's all that would have happened, right? Hmm, your argument and the pan and scan have convinced me. Set me up on that second date! Just kidding. You should really get drunk and let me seduce you. It's way hotter. Careful, you're touching her right in the movie windows. <laughs> I just came too. There's more important things to deal with, like her old work catering to mysteries. <laughs> oh my god, who's that? No time for that job. Meathead Mike and Gloria Stivic have a sweet offer. You'll be catching a flight to Fiji. Fiji? 
Oh, you don't have to worry about passports and so forth. We look after all that. You see, uh, they're in the middle of shooting their campaign and they need a replacement immediately. The day after Halloween. And that's when she decides to leave the modeling agency and the country. You may think it's because everyone is evil, but really, it's because they were out of skippies. I know one person who isn't going to like this news. <laughs> Holy shit, Clint Howard is outside! And if you want to stalk someone, there's stealthier ways to do it than with an ice cream truck. Just jump her! <laughs> She's getting the funk out of there. Think of all the sales she's running past. Each store probably has costumes up to 70% off. Sure, she could call the police, but it's best to call one creep to take care of another creep. They'll cancel each other out. Not only is it impossible for the ice cream truck to hide, but it's being driven by Piers Morgan. Gross! Ah, good, you're here to save me. Oh, wait, you're still a perv. What a huge turn of events. I did not see this coming. And boy, is it fun to edit around a scene where the wallpaper is fucking plastered in nudity. One thing leads to another, and he's on fire. Wait, did the opening scene give away the movie's ending? What the hell? That's like if Halloween opened with this. <laughs> And that just spoils the opening of Halloween 2! And this ending isn't at all like the one from Sleepaway Camp like they suggested. Ah, good. Saved by her stalker. We haven't seen a hero like this since Don Scardino and he knows you're alone. Thank God she's safe. I'm afraid I can't let you do that. Let me? Who do you think you are? What another turn of events! Everyone wants this girl for themselves. Or dead! <laughs> and Rum Raisin finally killed Daryl. Anyway, I'm also evil, Angela. But at least I'm way more attractive than Daryl. Come with me and we'll sell frozen lesbian bars together. <music> and that's the end of A Nightmare A Block Down From Elm Street. Quite an interesting little feature from the director of Free Willy. <laughs> Seriously. The movie actually has some familiar names attached to it. The film was directed by Simon Winsor, who would later go on to direct films like Operation Dumbo Drop, Quigley Down Under, Lonesome Dove, and Daryl, clearly a spin-off about Daryl the Stalker ice cream truck driver. The film was also co-written by Everett DeRoche, who worked on Fortress, Razorback, and Road Games. While the film didn't perform very well in Australia, in other countries it did a bit better, so, uh, I guess his change of title maybe worked in a way? I should say so. Renaming this movie the day after Halloween is literally the only reason I did an episode on it. Maybe I should do more hard drama thrillers about models. Seems right up my alley. Oh, oh, hold on to your horses. This movie about a model and her stalker was shockingly mediocre. So much so that it was perfectly fine. Bigger boils that and gold. It's that time of year to gather the family around the TV for a Halloween television special. But since I'm not sure if there's any new ones this year, let's go back to 1976. The campy and absolutely delightful persona of Paul Lind made him the perfect choice to host a Halloween special back in the 70s. He was a king of snark of his time, and with his roles as Uncle Arthur in Bewitched and the center square on Hollywood Squares, he was one of the most well-loved TV personalities of the decade. The man is hilarious and could easily get laughs just from using his own laugh. The Halloween special came out of his contract from ABC at the time. Lind had two starring sitcom roles, such as The Paul Lind Show, and when he took over his lead in the second season of Temperatures Rising. 
Sadly, neither show succeeded, and I haven't seen temperatures rising, but I can vouch that even though it's only one season, the Paul Lind show was hilarious. After the sitcoms, Lind was given a couple of variety shows to fulfill his contract. One was the Paul Lind Comedy Hour, but the most popular one is of course the Paul Lind Halloween Special, featuring a ton of cameos and cast members from Sid and Marty Croft Productions. The special was also co-written by Bruce Valanche. He co-wrote the Star Wars Holiday Special. Why didn't we get a Paul Lind Life Day Special, God damn it! The show's director was veteran variety show director Sid Smith, who directed a ton of Bob Hope's Christmas specials, and something called America Pauses for Springtime? Did... Did springtime die? As long as the Halloween season is still here, we should be good. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. Oh, God damn it! why does Christmas have to come earlier every year? He has a housekeeper whose main job is calling out his mistakes. What's the matter, Margaret? Jack Frost nipping at your nose. I love that Margaret Hamilton is playing herself here, implying that in the 70s, she worked as Paul Lind's personal housekeeper. Thankfully, she tells him it's not Christmas. He'll correct his mistake. Here comes Peter Tuck. down the bunny trail. And this is why I'll take Paul Lind over James Corden any day. It doesn't stop there. He goes through the other holidays, too. What is it, then? A Chinese New Year? A April Fool? May Day? Pay Day? Please dress like it's the Chinese New Year. He's sort of getting the Halloween spirit right. He is dressing up in various costumes. You can feel the excitement. Happy Halloween, everybody. Whoopie. <laughs> Lind is a master at not giving a shit. With this intro, I feel like he should also be advertising for the big giveaway at 9. There's even a monologue, which I'm sure will be timeless. As you know, there's a real scary holiday coming up. <laughs> Election Day. <laughs> I'm putting $100 on Gerald Ford winning. In the monologue, he mostly tells us of what Halloween was like when he was a kid. When I was young, Halloween was different. There was something about me that, uh, that stood out. I was fat. Oh, how can that be with the healthy cereals they grew up with? Unlike our healthy cereals of today. How does Margaret even have time to clean with all of these shenanigans? Get out of here, I need to sing a song. I'm crazy about the holidays. I love all the gifts and toys. Who says Musical March has to end in September? Here Paul sings Kids, which he also sung in Bye Bye Birdie, but without the witches. Kids, I am simply wild for these kids today. The little diamonds, kids. Oh sure, but when I sing that song, I get kicked out of the shopping mall. Somewhere, Gary and Phil from Deception of a Generation are clutching their pearls and popping a fear boner. We are getting kinky this season. It's not Halloween unless it ends with being tied by rope and stuffed in the garbage. Complete with trick-or-treaters with uncanny Donnie and Marie costumes. And since it's a variety show, there's gonna be some sketches after this commercial break. Experts at Magic Manor have everything you'll need this year, including actual character masks from famous motion pictures. And they can show you the proper application of makeup to impress that special someone. Magic Manor's professional hand-painted custom masks start as low as $2.50. This Halloween, remember Magic Manor. Wigs, masks, makeup, costumes, shockingly authentic. Magic Manor, East Wind Mall. Okay, I promise you some sketches, so I better deliver since I forgot to buy candy. Margaret, we must be way out of town by now. You're on a TV set with a fake background. They're getting away from all of those pesky kids and going to her sister's house because Paul's a big grumpus. Is it split level with trees and a garden and a stream? Yes, it is, Mr. Lynn. Oh, I hate places like that. <laughs> there should have been a Christmas Carol where he played Scrooge, and it would have been the best version. We'll have to settle for Paul Lind in the Rocky Horror Picture Show. Something about all of that makes sense. Just bring some sound effects. 
Down, Rover. That's Rover. <laughs> this is so silly, but still incredibly funny. Wait, Margaret's sister is Billy Hayes? Wilhelmina Witchy Poo from HR Puff and Stuff? Now I'm definitely getting high when watching this. Margaret is not only Paul's housekeeper, but apparently was also playing herself as the Wicked Witch of the West? And what about Dorothy and her little dog Tuck Tuck in The Wizard of Oz? She asked for it! Oh, she's from that Wizard of Oz. I thought this was a tie-in with the Turkish version. No, don't leave yet. There's more cameos. Would you care for something, sir? No, thank you. I don't smoke. <laughs> Never refuse a Billy Barty. You will drink your poison. You get out of here now. We have to meet Miss Halloween. Halloween! Miss Velma wishes she had these effects. Wait, who is this? Give me rise. <laughs> Holy shit, it's B. Arthur! With Betty White still with us and about to turn 100, there's still time for a Paul Lind Halloween special spinoff. She has a striking resemblance to Betty White. <laughs> yes, I know. <laughs> Boy, was I an idiot for saying B. Arthur earlier. The witches want him to be their spokesperson to say that witches get a bad rep. And all it takes is granting him a wish to become a rhinestone trucker. And it's just as amazing as you think it is. I'm called the rhinestone trucker because that is my name. My wish came true. How did you know I wished to see Paul Lind as a rhinestone trucker? It's a good time capsule reminder that trucker movies were popular in the 70s. It looks like they're racing to the premiere of Can't Stop the Music. You fools, that doesn't come out for another four years. Tim Conway plays not one trucker, but two. And he and Paul are on their way to meet their fiancés. How'd you meet her? I ordered her breakfast, and when she set it down in front of me, she said, be careful, the plate's hot, and so am I. <laughs> I kissed it, and we got engaged. I'm not sure I believe you. In true sitcom fashion, they're engaged to the same girl. Yeah, what's your girl's name? Kinky Pinky. Wait a minute, that's my girl. Oh yeah? Well, we're getting married at midnight tonight. Well, so am I. Oh, paint your wagon already taught me that you can both marry the girl and all it'll do is destroy the town. Wait, the fiancé is Pinky Tuscadero? She is three-timing Fonzie! This makes for an excellent Roz Kelly holiday double feature if you pair it with New Year's Evil. They gotta get married right away. Here, make one of the co-writers, Bill Menard, marry them before it's too late. <laughs> well, he's about to get sued. I'm not sure why I'm fighting so hard for this marriage. <laughs> Pinky, you can't wear two engagement rings. Give his back. You got a wrench? You can't marry the both of us. That's bigamy. Again, don't you remember what scripture says? You show me anywhere on the whole long list of Ten Commandments where it says a woman can't have two husbands. There ain't no commandment like that. I base all of my morals on the westerns of Clint Eastwood. Now it's starting to get a little unrealistic. I have the feeling those were both props. And you are paying for all of that! The alternate title should be Let's Ruin Billy Barty's Halloween. They've all got the strength of the Hulk. Keep your Avengers. I'm taking the Paul Lind Halloween special. And it's honest, too, about its predicament. The person with the most money wins. I'm happy for these newlyweds. Let's sing about it. Start your motor, step on the gas. Put out your arm when you're ready to pass. I don't know if this wedding will last. Don't know what this has to do with Halloween. I'd happily wear a rhinestone outfit and do a hoe down any day of the week and make 70s movie references. If my flicks make their money back, I could be bigger than Billy Jack. <laughs> that is some timeless Tom Laughlin love. Ooh, I see it's story time. They're reading the classics, Rosemary's Baby, The Exorcist, but it's far too early in time to be reading the novelization of Amityville 2, The Possession. Plus, Paul has the teleportation powers of Michael Myers. It really is Halloween. And there's a little treat for those kids who didn't get any candy this year. Mr. Lynn would like a bite. Oh, don't you touch <laughs> me! And that treat is cannibalism. 
what would be the perfect band to go along with this 70s Halloween special? Oh, they make such very soothing, quiet dinner music. You love them. We call them Kiss. I mean, Kiss, obviously. They can handle these monsters. I've personally seen them take down the Phantom of the Park. Wow, this special really is all of this year's musical March and September movies rolled into one. There's Kiss, The Polygamy of Paint Your Wagon, Cannibal the Musical, and Rhinestone. Everyone is into this. You can tell by Paul's face that says, I don't know what is happening. He's confused because this can't be Kiss. Where is the stunt double? If you're nauseous from the Halloween candy, though, the cameraman has got your back. He tripped over his own shoelaces and will make you even more sick. Here, Kiss performs Detroit Rock City, and it's actually their primetime network television debut. I was busy protesting it because clearly these effects are hypnotizing me into devil worship. Just kidding, this was everyone's night back then, listening to Kiss and playing a game of Monopoly. Oh good, I landed on Park Place. It was a mistake to spend Halloween at Grandma's house. Typical Monopoly, one thing leads to another and he wishes to be a sheik. Could you at least make me a sheik? Rich? A great lover? That we, we could, could do. do! Because it's bedazzled now! Did he wish for another cameo? By God, it's Lanny O'Grady, Shirley Partridge herself. That's why they call me Florence of Arabia. Wait, I'm wrong, it's Peter O'Toole. I sense some fiery passion here. Paul Lind and Florence Henderson, romantic leads. I shall make you mine with one burning kiss. No, oh, never. Never. Just saying the Conqueror would have been even better if it was Paul Lind playing Genghis Khan. Let's continue that kiss before more kiss. <laughs> totally into this. This is like an erotic thriller now. He's cheating on Pinky Tuscadero. She's not in this sketch, but there is another returning performance. How did you find me? I saw a camel parked outside. The one with the bumper sticker on it that says, I'd rather be in Vegas. I'm not sure how authentic that accent is. This is getting awfully scary. <laughs> what have I done? It's a shame the sketch has a sad ending. <laughs> <laughs> Darling, you escaped. Oh, thank God. <laughs> that was intense. And then the last 15 minutes is them making out. Kidding, there's more Billy Barty gags. Get down! Get down there! Back in bed! Don't you touch me! It was nice of Lloyd to have a cameo, too. When we come back, <laughs> cocaine. And it's a monster mystery riddle. Watercolors, not included, reveal the hidden pictures that are your clues for solving the monster riddle. One monster mystery in specially marked boxes of the monster cereals. This special has a real character arc. Paul is okay with witches now, clearly because they all have the same teleportation powers. But how come I don't get a wish in this? We want to go to a Hollywood disco. <laughs> Never mind, they took my wish. Also that it gets even more 70s. All my wishes are coming true. If this doesn't end with Frankenstein doing lines of cocaine off the backs of Dracula's brides, I'll be severely disappointed. Even Florence Henderson is back to bring some night fever to this Halloween party. And down and down I go, round and round I go. This documentary of 1976 is pretty accurate. She sings a disco cover of That Old Black Magic, I Hope This Party Never Ends. Look, the dancers are dressed like disco dancing Gabriel from Malignant. This rambunctious party is going to get even crazier now. We obviously have to get Kiss back in here to make things even wilder. If I hear you calling. With their slow, moody ballad. Oh, Beth, what can I do? Just like in Kiss Meets the Phantom of the Park, there is no one in this special named Beth. I do love this song, but I'm here for the awkward comedy. Yeah, that's what I've always wanted. Four kisses on the first date. <laughs> Kiss is not amused. 
Oh, I'm sure Paul can win them over. I can take one look at you four, and I can tell you how you got your name and how you got your act. You had a fight, and your mother's told you to kiss and make up. <laughs> this is why I'm an Alice Cooper fan. He gets all of my jokes. <laughs> I think they've completely run out of sketches, so KISS does another song. Though by now, most of the partiers are crashed out on the parking lot pavement, so there's only a handful left in the mansion. After they sing King of the Nighttime World, they have to wrap this up. The place is on fire and turning into a disco inferno. Due to his fire-breathing powers being more realistic than in their movie, but that inferno put a spark in their ass and Pinky and the dancers are back. Uh, do you think you could uh, teach me to do that? I don't know, give me a little whistle. That's too little. Studio 54 in five seconds. Welcome to a song that will be stuck in my head the rest of the season. Shake it up, shake it down, move it in, move it round, just go play, play. We as a society must bring back variety specials. Shake it up, shake it down, move it in, move it round, disco baby. But only the 70s ones. I guess I should continue taking notes, but I'm loving this take on Johnny Taylor's song, Disco Lady. Don't leave, Paul. I just put on my dancing shoes. Thank you for making me feel wanted. And thank you for inviting us into your homes tonight with our Halloween special. Paul Lind is always invited into my home, and with slang like this. Now, excuse me, I'm going back to my group to trip the heavy fantastic. Yes, it's about time those fun-sized Snickers and Quaaludes kicked in. This special showed you which TV viewers were cool on the night of October 29th, 1976. See, the partiers were watching the Paul Lind Halloween special, the excellent appetizer to look what's happened to Rosemary's baby, while the parents were watching Bob Hope's World of Comedy, and we cinema snobs were watching Terrence Malick, and some guy might have been watching Spencer's Pilots. I crashed long before the episode of Serpico. The special only aired once, but can easily be found online and on bootlegs. Sure, some of the sketches don't have much to do with Halloween, and could have been in any variety show, but it has the magical charm of Paul Lind, some sweet disco Halloween tunes, and like all variety shows, are a perfect time capsule of the time they were released. It'll get you in the mood before watching the Donnie and Marie Star Wars special. But now that I'm coming down from the drugs, I can prepare for next week's Halloween episode, which will feature the return of Angela. Night of the Demons 2, Angela, not Sleepaway Camp Angela. I'm turning myself on. 